there, I'm Leanne, and I am here with Greg from Fab Force to learn a little bit more about their products this year at SEMA. Now, I'm noticing something different on this window back here. Can you explain what's happening on the windshield? So all three of these trucks, Ford, Chevy, Dodge, in addition to the grumpers and the big tires, have Vicals. So that's what you're looking at, a windshield surround that we have dubbed the Vical. So what is this uh, Vical's purpose? I love answering this. It has absolutely no purpose. So you're telling me that you brought a product to SEMA with absolutely zero, zero performance. It's true. It just looks awesome, which is important though. I mean, you pick the wheels that you're running, you pick the tires. It's not all on how it works. There's a lot of style to each one of these things. How is it looking out the window? What's the visibility like? Great question, and that's a big concern to everybody. To keep it legal, we want it to be over the SDL line, the tent line, and that's actually no different than when you drop your visor. So actually, now that we've done it and I've run them so long, if I get into a Super Duty without a Vical, it feels weird. It's like you're driving a bus, you got this giant windshield, there's way too much sun coming in, you want your Vical back. Okay, and now I'm also seeing these cool lights on the, on the top here. Uh, what are the options with that? So they come with a standard opening, more of a discard piece if you're gonna upgrade, which is pretty common, to lighting. The one right here on the Dodge is actually four dualies. And then we have another option as seen on the Chevy with a 20 inch light bar. So both of those are built around the rigid frame, but will fit numerous brands. And as you can see, it's also a good opportunity to color match the insert. So they're sold separately, definitely a good way to enhance it and very small in comparison to the price of the normal Vical. Okay, so I'm noticing some rivets up on the top. Is that actually bolted to the A-pillar? Good question. People would be scared drilling into the roof or the A-pillar. So while it looks like that, you're actually only interfering with the fenders, which if something went drastically wrong is a lot easier to replace. So these have been tested and it's not that intrusive. So while there are a couple crush nuts and you pick up our bracket, the interference with the top of the cab so that you don't have vibration is a preload with a rubber stopper. So it's not intrusive to the top, it gets a very firm feel. You know, we cross country pulling with these trucks through Kansas and heavy winds at 80 miles an hour, no problem with them. It's a little bit low on the hood. Is it interfering at all with opening the hood? So interesting, it's called the Vical. That came from the Jeep, which had more of a cowl in front of the windshield. Whereas the trucks don't really have that landing zone on them. The original design, if you think about the hood opening, for these two parts to spoon properly, there would have been a V there. We actually did that with what we call our hood pivot relocation bracket. It's a mouthful, but it's pretty cool. So innovative teammate that I have, we actually changed that pivot point. It's high and up there covered under the Vical, but it allows the pivot to let that top stay right over it when it's in the closed position and get that contiguous feel. Okay, Greg, where can our viewers learn more about your products? Fabfours.com, it's got it all. Uh, just like the Grumper, we have exploded views of the Vical, so you can see the couple of options on the inserts. So F-A-B, F-O-U-R-S.com. All right, guys, you heard it here on Power Auto Media.